You may not guess from the aggressively generic title, flash game level graphics, and achingly dull UI, but this game, Card Survival Tropical Island, is potentially the greatest survival game I've ever played. A true hidden gem sitting at just a couple hundred Steam reviews, which are all overwhelmingly positive by the way, does one thing, survival, and it does that one thing incredibly well. Before I dive into this, let's unpack that genre because it's become a low-to term in gaming now. When I say survival, most gamers familiar with that genre can list off the tropes. Punch some trees, upgrade your tools, fill your hunger bar, etc. Since Minecraft struck gold with this formula over a decade ago, hundreds of games have copied it to great success. Heck, games in any genre will slap on a hunger bar and call itself a survival game now. I don't knock it, I think that core gameplay loop is incredibly effective at establishing the foundations for any video game. Gamers today are so familiar with that formula that if you drop anyone into an empty world with a hotbar at the bottom of their screen, chances are they'll probably start foraging for items and punching trees just out of instinct. That familiar gameplay loop, combined with the natural progression of gathering, crafting, and upgrading can ease a player into a more complex aspect of a video game later on. The result though is that survival quickly takes a backseat to the other parts of the gameplay. In most games of this genre, you will have a ready means of food and water within a few hours and then it's more about what else the game has to offer. Whether that's creating your own world, exploration, story, pvp, whatever. There's always some other genre, some other game mechanic intertwined to establish that mid to end game. Survival is rarely the focus, it's just the entry point to the rest. But within this genre of quote unquote survival games, there are actual survival games. Games focus on realism and the true difficulty of enduring a harsh environment. And most importantly, games focus on scaling that experience throughout the game, where trying to find enough food and water never becomes trivial and simply staying alive remains the core struggle all throughout. Here is where card survival comes in. Once you get past the shortcomings I mentioned at the start, this is a miracle of a game. Let's just get to the good stuff already, the gameplay. The goal of the game is to survive on a desert island. There's no plot, it's just you, nature, and survival. When you start the game, you'll notice a flashing icon for your journal. The journal serves as a kind of tutorial and ticking off the tasks within will help you survive the first few days of the game. The first task in the journal is to explore the bay that you spawned in. Here's our introduction to the card system. The top row on the screen represents your surrounding area. The leftmost card is the current location, I'm at the bay for example. Clicking into the bay card, I'm able to go for a walk and explore which yields some more discoveries about that area as well as some items. Those discoveries will appear in that top row and I can interact with them in different ways. For example, I might find a path into the jungle I can wander into or a palm tree that I can climb. Items I can pick up end up in the middle row which you can think of as objects strewn about within your area. I can either leave them there on the ground or move them into the bottom row which is my character's inventory. So after a bit of exploring, I find some stones and some coconuts. Dragging the stone card on top of the coconut card lets me husk the coconut. Dragging the stone on top again lets me crack it open to remove and eat the coconut meat inside. This is the core mechanic of the whole game. Exploring areas, finding items, and then discovering new ways to interact with those items. It appears incredibly simple on its face, but the item interactions slowly become deeper and deeper where eventually you're creating entire man-made structures and increasingly complex tools. I'm hesitant to show you too much more of this aspect though because a lot of the truly joyous moments of the game are in discovering those interactions yourself. That aha moment when you figure out how to do something like get fresh water, preserve your food, create a tool, that feeling is so satisfying because not only does it feel like you've solved a puzzle, but it actually feels like you're slowly adapting and learning to survive. And all of the item interactions make a lot of sense too, so you're rarely doing something as obtuse and unrealistic as mashing your hands into a tree and ending up with logs of wood. Card Survival takes things a step further with another very simple but clever game mechanic, the in-game clock. Every single action you take will take some amount of time from the day, and because you start with no other means of light other than sunlight, time becomes as limited a commodity as food or water. Once the sun sets, it becomes too dark to do most of the things you were able to do before, even something simple like cracking open a coconut. And god forbid you're somewhere deeper in the island, you won't even be able to navigate back. 
It's a game where choices matter. Do you stay in this area for a bit longer or start heading back in case something delays you from getting home in time? Do you have enough supplies to sit here and craft items all day or do you need to go out and forge for food? Here, skills come into play. Your character will start with some proficiencies and you'll want to pay attention to see what tasks might yield the best results and what risks are worth taking. And equally important to managing your time is balancing your character's myriad of needs and desires. Standard survival game metrics like hunger and thirst, sure, but also hygiene, sun exposure, digestive issues, mental health, these things are also all being affected as the day goes on. Your character will also just get tired as you do different activities and needs to take a short break every now and then. Hunger and thirst will be your main concern at the beginning, but it's not as simple as looking around for coconuts all day. Each area's resources are finite, so once you've fully explored it, you'll need to look elsewhere. But unlike the calm beach that you start on, the rest of the island is much more hostile in both the climate and wildlife. Wandering in without preparing the proper equipment might mean injury or worse. Speaking of injury, that's another interesting mechanic in this game. It's very easy to get sick or hurt, and that often means crafting or finding specific items with medicinal properties to patch yourself up. Being injured also means that tasks might take you longer now, or that some of your needs are depleting faster. The part that makes all of these game mechanics feel so special though is the part that I'm struggling most to demonstrate in this video, and that's depth. This game has so much attention to detail. Like in the earlier example of cracking open the coconut, you actually lose all of the coconut water if you use the method I described. There's a different process you need to figure out to open the coconut without spilling all the liquid. It's that kind of thing but for every single item in this game. To put a fine point on it, this shellfish you can collect is part of a cascading series of item interactions that will eventually allow you to build a food cellar. And all of those interactions are realistic and make sense too. The only other game I can think of with this degree of depth is Project Zomboid, which regularly wowed me with its attention to detail. Card Survival has that same flavor of, wow, I can't believe they thought to implement this. What makes all of this possible is this aesthetically ugly but functionally beautiful UI. Card Survival can pull off incredibly complex ideas because they only need to represent it in the form of one 2D card to another. And there's little touches here that really mesh well with the gameplay. Cards have descriptions which might point you toward other uses an item might have, and when you click and drag a card, other cards that it can interact with will also be highlighted. Discovering an item for the first time also highlights blueprints for that item which are more complex craftable objects that you unlock via suns, and in-game currency which you can earn by surviving one day in the game. I know that sounds overwhelming, and frankly the game is kind of overwhelming in the amount of freedom it gives you at first. But through the small touches in the UI and the previously mentioned journal, it does a great job of always pointing you in the right direction. Eventually, after a few initial playthroughs, you'll hit your stride in this game surviving dozens of days at a time. In most other survival games, this is the point at which they might introduce some other game mechanic. In this game, survival remains the sole focus all throughout. The game is wonderfully balanced to achieve this effect. First, as I mentioned, the regions around you are finite in resources, so you're forced to explore new areas that are more dangerous and also often farther away, meaning more of your precious daylight and time spent traveling. Second, everything useful in this game degrades from rotting foods to broken tools, so you'll almost always be in a resource crunch. Third, even if you manage to stockpile resources, if you don't have a way to keep them safe, nature will take them away from you. Sometimes literally in the form of animals stealing your items, but other times you might get struck with a natural disaster that ruins your unprotected goods. And as you attempt to balance all of these things, managing your deteriorating items, keeping your items safe from nature, stockpiling, your character is constantly one step away from death. One slip up could lead to a series of events to end your run. Maybe you get lost, sleep in the rain, and catch a cold. Maybe you climb a tree for coconuts, slip, and break your arm. Maybe you get food poisoning. None of those are death sentences, but they can start a sort of death spiral. For example, you might take twice as long to travel deeper into the island, and you can only bring back half as much stuff because you're sick and weak. Or maybe you can't hunt wildlife and it takes you twice as long to husk a coconut because your arm is broken. Or maybe your hunger and thirst is rapidly depleting and you have to eat your entire stockpile because you're violently expelling it all out. Card survival will rarely just slap a game over screen after a big event. It's always this slow spiral that you might have prevented if you were just a bit more careful, a bit more prepared, a bit more efficient. 
Just like in most real life survival scenarios, Game Over generally isn't getting mauled by wildlife, but is instead just withering away slowly by the indifferent ravages of nature. If you like this type of survival game, I sincerely hope you give Car Survival a go because it's one of the best things I've played all year. And I know I opened with a knock on its UI and art, but honestly, after a few hours, I found myself appreciating even that. It's a minimalist style and yes, yeah, some cars look like someone doodled them on a tablet, but a lot of it is also quite good, especially the artwork for wildlife. And the screen will change colors and show effects to reflect the sunlight, show rain, flicker with a campfire, which is a nice touch. And the sound design is similarly minimalist too. No music, but plenty of simple sound effects and ambient sounds. None of it is a showstopper, but it's an appreciated and unobtrusive accompaniment to help immerse you into the setting. There's also some meta progression as well. Each day you survive earns you a sun, and surviving 30 days in a row earns you a moon. In addition to unlocking blueprints with the suns, you can also spend the suns and moons to unlock character traits to create your own character and customize your playthrough. Some of these are straightforward, like just being good at climbing, but others are straight up bonkers, like playing as a mermaid that always has to stay wet. These tweakable settings greatly increase replayability and you can make for some fun scenarios. If you think you might be interested in this game, this is the perfect time to get it as they've just released their last early access update, and it's slated for a 1.0 release soon. The devs, Winter Spring Games, seem really great and have been churning out frequent updates since it released on Steam a year ago. Even in just the past couple months, they've released new biomes, items, game mechanics, and visual and UI improvements. They certainly won't keep up this pace after the 1.0 release, but I've been really happy with this studio's work, and they say they'll provide a slower pace of updates as well as some polish to the game after 1.0. If you want to pick it up, it's available on PC for 17 bucks on Steam, but it's actually available on Google Play as well. I played this on my computer, but if you don't have a PC or you're looking for a mobile game with some depth, this would be a great pickup. All right. That's all. See you next month.